My name is Dr. Rob Yonover, and I'm a career changer. I, I was trained to work on volcanoes, but in, in between flying from island to island, I was on a plane that sounded like it was going to ditch. And I knew it would sink, and they'd never find us, because our heads are just coconuts. They'd never see us. Sure enough, people have this problem all the time. So if I could just figure out how to mark myself, and I invented this rescue streamer, a long orange piece of plastic, it has struts in it that I patented, so it's like a centipede, it won't twist up. It unfurls behind you, it's now approved by all branches of the military, it's on every Navy submarine, it's used worldwide. It all started here in Hawaii. Sea rescue streamers, these are long streamers that mark your position when you're lost at sea. They're approved by all branches of the military, they're used worldwide, they've even been credited with saving four lives. It's great having the streamer approved by the military and being used all over the world, but the biggest thrill for me was meeting the guy that was saved, that was saved by my streamer. Two local divers used it and were saved when they were lost from their boat, and two military guys in Afghanistan. And that's been the most satisfying thing to me, is to be able to meet someone that used my invention to save their life. But the Air Force years ago asked me to develop a, a self-deploying infrared streamer that could be seen at, at night. Now the lighted streamer has two light tubes on it with infrared settings, detectors that go off only when it's dark, so it enables you to save the battery. And the Navy, when they, when they first did the testing on the streamer, it was spotted from 1.5 miles away and 1,500 feet. The lighted streamer was seen from 6 miles away at 3,000 feet. The retired colonel said he would never fly without it, and he said, furthermore, wait till nighttime to tell him to search for me, which is unheard of because most are called off during the day. In addition to the streamer, I invented a, a life-saving device for flotation. When you're lost at sea or you find yourself in floods, it, it, the key there is to be able to float. If you can't float, you're going to die. So in the military, they have a one-man life raft they call a coffin. That's a nickname, and I don't know about you, but I don't want to be laying in something called the coffin. Instead, with my Hawaii surfing background, I invented an inflatable paddleboard rescue board called Life Float. It's patented and it's able to be airdropped from helicopters and inflated in the helicopter with scuba tanks or CO2 cartridges when it hits the water. And it floats a person, you can use it as a stretcher, and it's able to save your life if you can float. One time a Navy guy fell overboard and he didn't have his life jacket, but he was smart enough to take a condom out of his pocket and held onto it and inflated it, gave him enough flotation. And I, I agree with this guy, if I'm going to die, I want to at least have my pants on, because in the Navy they teach you to inflate your pants for flotation. So he used a condom, gave me the idea, I invented two condoms and a string with a special netting that keeps it really strong, it goes under your arms, if one pops you still have the other. Either way, it's the smallest life jacket in the world that enables you to have flotation. One of the key problems in survival is, is making enough water to survive. Whether you're in a polluted water or salt water, it's hard to make fresh drinking water. I invented the desalinator, which uses Gore-Tex, which is a thin mesh that's used in most raincoats. The mesh is so small that rain can't go in, but air does. That's why it breathes as a raincoat. I use it in reverse. Inside this black plastic bag, you put salt water or polluted water, when it evaporates from solar heating, only the fresh water can, it, can evaporate. It's caught on the outer bag and then you drink it. You make fresh water all day. Over the years, people are always asking me, how'd you do this, how do you do that in the inventing world? Finally, I just sat down and teamed with an author, a co-author and wrote this book called Hardcore Inventing. I'm developing a kids' TV show based on my Hardcore Inventing book called Hardcore Inventing Live. We take kids out here, we turn them out, to sh turn off their cell phones, shut down their computers, and just use their brains attack problems, solve a problem, any problem, use their head, use their survival skills to attack a problem. It's all about being creative. I show them my creative ideas on how I solve problems and I task them to do the same. Tell me what problem you're going to solve.